We recently covered the astonishing rock-cut structures known as Madain Sala. Located within modern-day Saudi Arabia, they are largely attested by most modern-day academia as being rock-cut tombs made by a civilization 2,000 years ago. However, the precision involved in the cutting of such a remarkable collection of buildings will not have escaped the astute-minded among us. Just how did these civilizations, two or even three thousand years ago, manage to create such awe-inspiring structures, with the tools available at that time within known history? Just as the pyramids in Giza are attributed to the Egyptians, it is highly possible these claims of ownership were but mere inhabitations of sites far older. Many people who have investigated these rock-cut tombs have come away with a conclusion that some of the architecture is so precisely cut, to recreate such straight angles would require the use of laser technology. A presumption also shared by us. It is therefore delightful when one stumbles upon something such as Al Nasla. Located within Tamiya Oasis, also within Saudi Arabia, was this utterly perplexing stone left as a lasting signature of the tool used to create Madain Saya? Discovered by Charles Hoover in 1883, was this amazing megalith cut in twine with a laser? Or indeed some form of highly advanced, highly ancient precision equipment of some form? If not, what could have created such a miraculous split so finely made and so straight within such an enormous rock? A perfect line straight through the center left perfectly balanced upon two separate bases for untold millennia. Interestingly, in 2010, the SCTH, or Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, announced the discovery of a rock near Tama, with a hieroglyphic inscription of Pharaoh Ramses III upon it. Researchers have therefore hypothesized that Tama was a part of an important land route between the Red Sea coast of the Arabian Peninsula and the Nile Valley. Was al Nasla, along with Made Sawya, constructed by the same individuals as the Great Pyramids of Giza? Furthermore, archaeologists have discovered cuneiform inscriptions, possibly dating from the 6th century BC, pertaining to a legendary ancient civilization known as Oasis City. Mentioned within the Old Testament, it was said to have been a highly developed civilization with complex buildings and an advanced knowledge of waterworks. The oldest mention of Oasis City appears as Tiamat in Assyrian inscriptions, dating as far back as the 8th century BC. Were these mysterious people the culprits? With such precisely made rock-cut structures found within the same landscape, structures that many have reluctantly concluded display evidence of advanced stone-cutting technology, we find the existence of al Nasla highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India. A temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people? a remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides they could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which, literally, boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish. Evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. 
The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple, also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone? Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, Caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. India is a place littered with incredible ancient yet unexplained ruins. Intricate ancient carvings can be found dotting the cliff faces. Seemingly laser-cut caves hewn from enormous rocks and perhaps the most impressive of its collection, the rock temples hewn straight from bedrock, which can be found all over the country. We recently focused our attention on one of these sites in particular, perhaps the most impressive of these ancient temples. Known as Kailash, it is a structure drenched in sculpted animals and religious idols. Many others also exist, somehow carved straight out of stone hillsides. The accuracy in which these structures were carved, the refined finish achieved, has allowed these structures to evade explanation to this day. There is, in fact, another site within India, another temple, that, just like Kailash, was somehow hewn from a solid hillside. However, what is particularly interesting regarding this temple is that it was mysteriously abandoned, leaving the apparent different stages of its construction for all to see. Known as Vetivan Coil, it is located within Kalagumalai, a panchayat town in the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Intriguingly, upon the structure and the carved walls, which it is now framed by, is the same telltale chisel marks found at so many other sites around the world an anomaly we have already covered in depth. However, what is particularly interesting regarding Vetivan Coil is the fact that these crude marks are also accompanied by the seemingly impossible perfect finished sculptures, which mystify all who peer at them to this day. It is a visual, chronological timeline cast in stone, possibly left by an as yet unknown people using unexplained yet amazing artistic skills. The temple seemingly displays the methods used to carve it. The artist responsible crudely chiseled the design, presumably somehow from the mind's eye, then somehow professionally worked into the refined, astonishing art, which adorns so many of these ancient Indian structures. Who built Vetivan Coil? How did they achieve such perfection? with such hard stones at such an early time in history? Is it, like academia would have you believe, a mere 1400 years old? Or is it a far more ancient structure, built using as yet unknown stone working techniques, used by an unknown group of artists? As research mounts surrounding such sites, the answers will inevitably be discovered.
The Giza Plateau undoubtedly holds some of the most profound secrets ever left by the ancient world. Once lost beneath the sands of time, some of the most astonishing structures ever to have been rediscovered by our modern civilization. One of these astonishing, yet little shared sites, is a Syrian temple. Not only is the name uncannily similar to the constellation Orion, but the similarities with this supposed tomb to the many other structures which have subsequently been unearthed over the years is undeniable. Constructed with the same 100-plus ton pink granite blocks as many other temples found upon the plateau, its stone was too sourced from the once mysteriously abandoned Aswan Quarry, a distance of 300 kilometers away, an astounding distance to transport such blocks that, according to academia, were moved with no advanced technologies. Hidden upon one of the structure's enormous megaliths, is what can only be described as a machine-accurate image of a flower of life. These two engravings, created with such precision, were somehow left upon the stone. We recently covered the claims made by John Anthony West regarding the water controversy of the Great Sphinx, relating to its theory of it once being a lion, aligned with Leo some 10,000 years ago. We uncovered overwhelming evidence which West must have been aware of to prove his theory not only untrue, but seemingly conspiratorial. What's peculiar regarding the actual connections with the flower, if of course authentic, is that other researchers such as Thrive maker Foster Gamble related it to the Taurus design, which he now believes is a signal from advanced beings on how to tap free, unlimited energy a claim eerily reminiscent of our own recent research into a possible arc, regardless of others' hostile reception. We find his claims highly compelling.